No animals fascinate like snakes. Terrifying to some, exquisite to others. Elegant and endangered. Born to hunt, yet so vulnerable. Late winter, the snow has grown damp and heavy. Most of the animals have survived the cold months quite well. Soon the white ermine will change its color to brown. South facing slopes are already nearly bare. Those who succumbed to the cold and snow slowly appear, insects, for example. The snow also reveals other fragile forms. A snake skin discarded last autumn. But where is the snake itself? Where did it disappear to when snow and ice covered the earth? Snakes spend the winter in frost-free cavities in the ground. Their body energy is reduced to a minimum. In this brumation, they can just keep alive. The power of the spring sun changes everything. until the snakes drowsily abandon their refuge. Its first winter over, a young Escalapian snake directs its attention to the spring butterflies. They don't count as prey, but they're the first life forms it's seen in six months. And soon, there's much more to see. More and more snakes also appear with the rising temperatures to sunbathe. The harmless grass snake is the most common snake in Europe. It's recognized by the two yellow markings on the back of its head. After its winter rest, it's not just looking for warmth. Sometimes spring sees the phenomenon of mass mating, when 50 or more gather. They'll spend the rest of the year alone. Spring is also the time to encounter the slow worm. It looks like a snake, but only at first glance. It has eyelids, and that makes it a lizard. Snake eyes, by contrast, are lidless and covered by a transparent scale. That's what gives them the snake-like stare. So if it blinks, it's not a snake. A subtle but important difference. Even today, there's a great deal of ignorance about snakes. Their permanently darting tongues are not a sign of aggression. 
It's their way of smelling. Odor molecules are drawn from the air and evaluated by a special organ in the roof of the mouth. Their darting tongues lead them to their prey. It even works underwater. The growing intensity of the spring sun quickly warms the upper levels of the lake. The swimming season has started for the grass snake. A grass snake can grow to nearly two meters, moving with extreme elegance in the liquid element. The search for amphibian prey may mean swimming hundreds of meters. No shortage of frogs and toads in the tangled vegetation along the shore. Toads are perfect sized prey but this one has a bright signal color. Toads and grass snakes don't exactly live in harmony, but the snake is indecisive. It may look like the toad is giving up, but in fact it's displaying its warning colors. To the grass snake, that means I'm inedible move on. And when the snake is out of range, the toad takes off too. Another predator is in and out of the water, a European otter. It eats fish, crabs, mussels, amphibians and snakes. Otters are superb divers. A gently gliding grass snake has no chance. The snake has no defense. The scent gland meant to frighten off smaller attackers only seems to make the otter's meal more tasty. It devours it whole. Every little piece. Snakes have conquered nearly every habitat in Europe. One climbs to great heights. Spotted in treetops at 20 meters or more, the Escalapian snake. It's not poisonous and a true survival specialist. Its greatest skill is climbing trees. As if gravity didn't exist, it glides higher and higher in a vertical line by jamming the edge of its belly scales into any irregularity. And snaking its way continuously up the trunk. At dizzying heights, it seeks out an undisturbed place in the sun. The northernmost habitat of the Escalapian snake takes in southern Germany, the Czech Republic, Slovakia and Austria. At over two meters, it's one of the largest snakes in Europe and it's harmless to humans. About 2,000 years ago, the species was given a boost by the Roman city of Carnuntum near Vienna. 
when more Escalapian snakes were brought from the Mediterranean and released in Carnuntum. The snake was welcome for religious reasons. It was dedicated to the Roman god Escalapius and was itself considered divine. Even today, it symbolizes the healing arts for physicians and pharmacists. But the Romans didn't just bring the Escalapian to Austria. They also brought domestic rats that hadn't been known here until then. Proximity to humans gave them refuge and plenty of food, and they multiplied rapidly. Escalapian snakes almost became domesticated thanks to the permanent offering of rats. In Roman times, the Escalapian was highly appreciated as a pest controller. Some things change over time. 2,000 years later, Escalapian snakes are still seen in gardens in Vienna and Lower Austria. These gardens are rarely full of mice or rats. But another potential prey, birds and their young, are often found in larger numbers here than in forests or meadows. The goldfinch is possible prey for an Escalapian snake. But this climbing snake is drawn by a different odor trail. A tip box. If it's occupied, that's the end of the brood. If not, it'll be a good overnight shelter. Where there are no nestlings, an Escalapian snake will also be satisfied with a clutch of eggs. Its lower jaw is so flexible that it can swallow the eggs whole. Some species of snake can be found in large numbers at the end of a spring in piles of leaves and vegetation. In such exposed areas, they're not seeking food, but suitable locations for their offspring. Three Central European snake species don't give birth to live young. They lay eggs in decomposing vegetation. Snake eggs don't have hard shells like birds' eggs. Their surfaces appear leathery and have indentations. Female grass snakes lay 10 to 50 eggs. Snakes don't brood the eggs themselves. The heat of rotting vegetation does it for them. Central European landscapes reach from the lowlands to the highlands. 
one species of snake has adapted to the higher climbs. It's found in the foothills of the Alps between 1,000 and 2,000 meters. It loves the harsh mountain climate. A snake wreathed in myth and legend. The adder, or common viper. A contemporary of the mammoth that has survived to the present day. The vertical pupil of the viper family is its most distinctive feature. And vipers are poisonous. On the back of the head, there's often a V or X shape and a dark zigzag ribbon along its back. The females are mostly brown to copper colored, while the males are more of a gray color. But even among hundreds of animals, no two share exactly the same coloring. Their tail always ends in a short tip. In the cool alpine climate, mating often first takes place in May. The smaller males besiege the females and perform mating dances. The whole process can take several hours. For centuries, there have been stubborn rumors that a highly dangerous poisonous snake lives in remote mountain regions. Immediately recognizable for everyone, it's black as midnight the black common viper. They exist, but they're neither a separate species nor especially dangerous. They are completely black common vipers that every now and then appear, in effect the opposite of an albino. And like every common viper, they have an appetite for mice. Two hollow teeth, like injecting needles, are located in the upper jaw. They're supplied by poison glands in the head. The poison targets the vascular system. The mouse dies within minutes. Only then will the snake claim its prey. Common vipers rarely grow longer than 60 to 70 centimeters. They can become angry if they're approached too closely and feel threatened. Deer leave the mountain forests to graze in green pastures. The preferred sunbathing area of the common viper. Snakes have neither an outer ear nor an eardrum and therefore hear poorly. Their inner ear is sensitive to the vibrations caused by larger mammals. A 
A snake's first instinct is to flee. But when a common viper feels crowded and the unsuspecting deer continues to advance, a step too far can lead to doom. A defensive bite injects less poison than a hunting attack. But this is a young deer. After just an hour, it loses its balance. And it crashes to the ground. The poison has caused internal bleeding and damaged critical organs. In some cases, a viper's bite can result in death. But no human has died from the bite of a common viper since the 1960s. Hedgehogs make their home in many different habitats, including those shared with common vipers. As well as alpine uplands, common vipers also like hilly moorland. They've adapted to the damper climate over millennia. When a common viper encounters a hedgehog, the snake doesn't stand a chance. Hedgehogs are passionate insectivores, but they won't sniff at a poisonous snake. Their spines are perfect protection. It's only a matter of time before the exhausted common viper loses the life or death struggle. The boggy cotton grass meadows hide a doppelganger of the common viper, the harmless smooth snake. A closer look reveals the difference. While common vipers have vertical pupils, a smooth snake's pupils are always round. It may not be poisonous, but it is unusual. Smooth snakes hunt lizards and other snakes. If it meets a common viper, the viper's life is in danger. But this one's too big. The smooth snake stops. It coils round its victim to strangle it.
the mini anaconda only lets go when it's suffocated the lizard. And it can drag it away. A summer dawn over the warmest alpine lake, Carinthia's Wörthersee. Snake Island was named for its elongated shape. But like its neighbor, Capuchin Island, it's a perfect habitat for the dice snake. It's harmless to humans and a habitat specialist. It can swim and dive exceptionally well, remaining underwater for an hour or more. Dice snakes prefer to hunt small fish. They lurk at the bottom of the lake and snap at passing prey. If the titbit is too big to devour immediately, the dice snake brings its prey onto land. This snake can be found throughout Europe, when the conditions are right. Above all, it needs unpolluted waters, like here in the Wörthersee. Or natural flowing streams with unreconstructed banks, like the Kamp in northern Austria. One of the few rivers that remains unregulated. The dice snake hides on a gravel bank, warming up between dives. Then it returns to the flowing waters. Although the dice snake is rarely longer than one meter, it's extremely powerful. Once it has a grip, it won't let go of this rud. Like all snakes, it isn't able to dismember its prey, so it devours it whole. Thanks to its extremely flexible jaw, it can swallow relatively plump fish. It then wrenches its mouth back into shape. In 2009, the dice snake was named Endangered Reptile of the Year. And that still applies today. It only survives where there is clean, clear water. The dice snake has laid up to 25 eggs in rotting vegetation near its hunting grounds. The heat of decomposition will hatch the clutch of eggs after 10 weeks. The leathery shell is perforated from within.
It can take minutes or several hours for the young snakes to struggle out of the eggshell. The birth process of these reptiles hasn't changed for millions of years. The little snakes are perfectly developed from the first moment and still carry their yolk sac, which they'll lose in the next two days. Tangles of young grass snakes are found until midsummer. Once they make their way to the surface, each goes its own way. Frog spawn has long since transformed into tadpoles. In cool mountain areas, they develop slowly and can still be found in August. The table is set for the young grass snakes. They don't need to learn to hunt, they're born to it. Tadpoles are the ideal prey for snakes that are hardly longer than 10 centimeters. The young grass snakes seem insatiable. But when they can't find food, they may need to fast for several weeks. It's not unusual for several young snakes to fish in the same pond. There are lighter and darker versions of grass snakes. But the behavior is the same. Eat as much as you can. Time for a rest after a good meal. That applies to all snakes because they digest slowly. However, the slow and the inattentive live dangerously. Of the large number of grass snakes that hatch every year, only a fraction survive. Ravenous hunters are everywhere. A praying mantis can overwhelm young grass snakes. The mantis will devour the reptile right down to the last scale. Relatively soon after birth, young snakes have milky eyes. This is not due to an illness, but is part of a cycle that recurs throughout their lives. In order to grow, they must shed their skin at regular intervals. This usually happens in one piece. The transparent eye scale is also shed, and head first, the snake peels off the parchment-like skin. It tangles itself in vegetation to create fiction and rolls off the old skin like a glove turned inside out. The slough remains a thin shell of scales.
Like snakes, black storks avoid humans. Quite unlike their white relatives, they brood hidden deep in forests. Freshly molted young Escalapian snakes live in the same habitat. Black storks have excellent eyesight and hunt all kinds of small creatures in forests and meadows. Young Escalapian snakes look a lot like grass snakes. The black stork isn't choosy. Its massive bill can cope with large prey and at one meter tall it's a dangerous predator. By late summer, there are large numbers of young snakes. The black stork has no problem finding them. The bill has sharp edges to go with its sharp tip. The shaking breaks the snake's vertebrae and ribs. The stork takes its time, making sure the snake is truly dead before it swallows. The black stork can't endanger the Escalapian snakes as a species. It's much too rare for that. Summer has passed its peak. In the alpine foothills, the signs are all there. Plants like the corn lily or monk's hood. The adder now bears 15 young that haven't hatched from eggs, but are born fully developed. The important thing now is to spread out and find suitable living space. The lack of suitable habitats means that some snakes are becoming rarer throughout Europe. Some are now only found in tiny areas limited to a few square kilometers. One of these nature islands is Corinthian's Geil Valley in Austria at the foot of the Dobrach mountain. This almost impassable area has been battered by rock falls. In places, it looks as though a giant has strewn boulders around like pebbles. Hard to believe a landscape like this could attract much animal life. And yet, one of the largest and most poisonous snakes in Europe lives in this region. The nose-horned viper, also called the sand viper. The scaled horn on the tip of its snout makes it unmistakable. It's found in the Balkans, Bulgaria and Greece, 
and anywhere between South Tyrol and Turkey. Like all vipers, it has two poison fangs in its upper jaw. Its bite is more dangerous than the common vipers, but deaths are still extremely rare. The last one in Austria was around 70 years ago. The poison works quickly on rats and mice. The nose-horned viper is perfectly camouflaged in its rocky surroundings. But its popular name of sand viper is inaccurate. It's never found on sand. The dark zigzag band on its back is especially pronounced. The male larger than the female, can grow to more than a meter. Males and females are often so different in coloring, they look like different species. The females are mostly brown to copper colored, the males more ash to dark gray. Dusk in this wild area of rock falls in southern Carinthia. The giant rocks release the stored heat of the day. Best conditions for warmth-loving reptiles. Nose-horned vipers are active at twilight. They don't lay eggs, but instead give birth to live young. The climate in mountain regions would be too harsh for clutches of eggs. Live birth is better for the survival of the species. The young are still in their amniotic sac when they're born. But after only a few hours, they become quite lively and already resemble the adult snakes. Nose-horned vipers can give birth to up to 20 young per litter. That seems a lot, but only one or two will survive to breed. The fight for survival is tough for young snakes. The future of this majestic species is more than uncertain. Their tiny remaining habitats are isolated islands and could disappear entirely. From Austria's alpine regions to the Pannonian lowlands close to Hungary. This region is home to very special flora and fauna that have adapted to the aquatic world and the swamps. A mysterious little snake settled in the water meadows. It wasn't described by science until 1897. Orsini's viper. But hardly had it been documented than it was threatened with extinction. Within 80 years, it was gone. The last photos in the wild were taken 50 years ago. The last half century has changed the ecosystem dramatically.
like here at the border between Austria and Hungary. Orsini's vipers have gone from here. And though the Neusiedle See National Park does all it can to protect flora and fauna, Orsini's viper has become a phantom. But kilometers beyond the Austrian border in Hungary, we still find the smallest and rarest poisonous snake in Europe. From the tip of its snout to the end of its tail, Orsini's viper measures no more than 35 to 50 centimeters. It's never found in the forest, specializing in open water meadows and grassy steppes. Orsini's viper ignores other snakes' prey. They're much too big. It hunts insects like crickets and grasshoppers. The green bush cricket is relatively safe in the bushes. Orsini's vipers don't climb trees. The wartbiter, however, is definitely within range. Once again, the insect is swallowed whole. Sadly, Orsini's vipers have disappeared almost everywhere in Europe. The result of persecution and habitat loss. Autumn in Austria. The colors change within weeks. The days grow shorter and temperatures drop. A profound change for snakes that above all need warmth. As the insects collect the last pollen and nectar, the active phase for Escalapian snakes is ending too. The final beautiful days of autumn. The sun gives its all one last time. But the power of late summer has long since waned.